Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over functions in C++. So functions allow us to define a reusable block of code for a specific task or workflow. And a function needs to be called or invoked to run that block of code. And a function can take in parameters or arguments and return a value. So you might be familiar with functions in C++ because we have this main function. And this main function gets called or invoked every time we run our program. And we also have this return type, which is an integer. And this basically means that this main function, once this main function finishes running, it returns an integer value. And this integer value is an error code. So sometimes you might see return zero at the end of a C++ program. But in C++, this is not necessary. By default, it will return zero, but you can return other numbers as well, such as negative one. So we can define other functions outside this main function. So for instance, let's say I want to define a function that just says hello. I would do void and we need to name this function. So just like how this function is named main, we would need to give a name for our new function. And I'm just going to call it greet. And then we create these parentheses here and then curly braces. So the structure is similar to what we have in this main function. Now this void means we are not returning anything. So within our main function, we return an integer, but within this greet function, we are going to return nothing. So we have void. And then here I'm going to do C out hello. So what we just did was define a new function called greet that returns nothing. And it's just going to print out hello. Now, if I save and run the program, let's see what happens. And you can see nothing happens. We don't get the print statement here. And that is because even though we define the function, we need to call the function. So in order to call the function, we would just type in the function name, greet and parentheses. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get hello. And I can call it two more times. So if I call it three times and I save and run the program, you can see hello gets output three times. So whenever we define a function, the block of code inside the function does not run until we call the function. Now, another thing we can do is we can add parameters or arguments in our function. So for instance, let's say I have these three lines here. You can see this is repetitive because I'm just saying hello to each city. And the only difference between each line is the city name. So what I can do here is pass in a parameter or argument. So parameter or argument means the same thing. And I can pass in a string and I can say string city. We will print out the city name. So instead of doing it like this, I can just call this greet function for each city name. So I can do greet New York, greet London, greet Paris. So as you can see, once we add this parameter, we can't just say greet like this, because now our function expects the user to pass in a string. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get hello, New York, hello, London, and hello, Paris. And just like with ranged for loops, this variable is a temporary variable. And when we pass in a value here, such as New York, we're basically saying, city is equal to New York. So we are assigning this value New York to city. And since it's an assignment with a string, we are making a copy. And when we make a copy, this is called pass by value. So we don't want to pass by value because every time we make a copy, it can be expensive. There's no need for us to make a copy. Instead, we can just directly pass in the reference. So when we pass by reference, we do not make a copy. Instead, we directly assign this value to city. And another thing we can add is const. So const is saying that when we pass in a reference of this value in New York, we are not going to change this value at all in this function. So whenever we are passing in by reference, we always want to mark it const if we are not changing the value. So here we are just printing the value city. We are not modifying it in any way. We are not changing the letters here. So we mark it as const. 
So this is more memory efficient since we are not making a copy of the value New York. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get Hello New York, London, and Paris. Okay, so that is the difference between pass by value versus pass by reference. And we'll cover this topic more in detail in the next video. And earlier I mentioned that we couldn't do greet like so because our function expects us to pass in a string. Now what I can do is if I don't always expect the user to pass in a value, I can assign this city parameter a default parameter. So for instance, maybe I want to make this city by default unknown. So if I don't pass in anything, this city gets the default value unknown. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get this hello unknown because the default value is unknown since in this first function call, we don't pass in any string value. And another thing to note here is that when I define my function, I defined it up here. Now if I copy and paste this and define it down here, let's see what happens. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get this error and that is greet was not declared in this scope. And that is because C++ code runs top to bottom. So when we call greet, C++ doesn't know what this means because at this point, greet has not been defined yet. For that reason, we place this function above where it's being called. Okay, so the code runs from top to bottom. Now generally, we do define the functions below the main function because it's a lot easier to read. Imagine if you had like 20 functions in this file, you want to see the main function before the function definitions. So what we can do is we can take this line and copy and paste it up here and add a semicolon. So this is called a function signature. When we define a function signature here, we are basically saying there is a function called greet that takes in a const reference of a string and it has a default value of unknown and it returns void. So this is the function signature. So we tell C++ that this function exists and we define it in a different place, which is down here. And this is very useful if you have many functions in your file. So you would just put all your function signatures above the main function and define them after the main function. And let's say I have a lot of code in my main function. So I'm just going to copy and paste this comment just to extend the lines a bit. So now we can't see where our function greet is defined. So if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can just click on the function name, right click, and just go to definition. And it will hop to where that function is defined. Alternatively, you can just click on this and press F12, and you'll jump to where the function is defined. Okay, so that's how you can define a function signature and then define the function later. So this will make your code much more readable. Now, another thing we can do is we can return a value in our function. So before our greet function only had a void return type. So this means we don't return anything. What we can do is we can define a function that returns something. So let's say I return a double and this function is called multiply. So it takes in two numbers of type double. So we have a and b and I'm just going to return a times b. So here I can just call see out multiply 5.5 and 5.5 so if i save and run the program you can see we get 30.25 so we have a multiply function and it takes in two values a and b which we pass in here and it returns a double so it returns a times b so we get this value back and we can print it Another thing we can do is assign this value to a variable. So I can just create a variable double called result. And I can just call multiply 5.5 and 5.5. And then here I can just print result like so. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get 30.25. And in my previous videos, we talked about implicit type conversions. So let's say I change these values to just integers. So we have a return type of int a is int and b is int. If I pass in 5.5 and 5.5, both of which are doubles, let's see what happens. And as you can see, we get 25. And that is because earlier I mentioned that when we pass in these values, our parameters are basically variables. So we are assigning a to 5.5 and b to 5.5. 
and it is the same as saying int a is equal to 5.5 and int b is equal to 5.5. Now this is where implicit type conversion happens. So a becomes 5 and b becomes 5. So when we convert a double to an integer, we drop the decimal place. Okay. And the parameters don't have to be the same type. I can have double a and int b and I can have a return type of integer. I can also do double a and double b and it will return an integer type. So if I return an integer type, what will happen if I pass in 5.5 .5 and 5.5? .5? So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get 30. And that is because 5.5 .5 times 5.5 .5 gives us 30.25. And when we return it as an integer type, we truncate this value and get rid of this 0.25. And this becomes 30. And then when we return this 30 and assign it to a double, we convert this to a double, so this is just 30.0, okay? So implicit type conversions work for the return type as well as the parameter types. So functions allow us to define a reusable block of code for a specific task or workflow. So if I want to print a times five, this character a, what will happen? So if I save and run the program, let's see what happens. And you can see we get this number 325. So what happened here was, a gets converted to its ASCII value, which is 65. And then we end up doing 65 times five, which gives us 325. Now, what I can do is I can create a function that will change this behavior. So I can create a function that returns a string and call it multiply. We can take in a character C and an integer for number of repetitions. And I can just do string result is equal to an empty string for int i is equal to zero. i is less than repetitions. i plus plus result plus equal c. And then I return result. So here I can do c out and I'll pass in multiply a and five. So if I save and run the program, uh, oops, I missed a semicolon here. So let's put the semicolon here. All right, so if I save and run the program, you can see we get five A's. So basically, when I do the character A times five, I want it to give me five A's, like so, in a string. But unfortunately, that's not the behavior of multiplying a character and an integer in C++. So what I can do is I can just define my own function that creates this behavior and gives me a repeated five times as a string. And of course, this block of code is reusable. So I can put a triple dollar sign and put in three here. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get three dollar signs here. So by defining it in a function, this block of code is reusable. So this for loop only needs to be written once. All right, so that's the basics of functions in C++. And in the next two videos, we're going to talk more in depth on functions. So that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.